I agree now that our God is a good God. Amen. The truth is that many are those who are in the mortuaries. Many are those who are obituaries. But by the grace and by the mercy of God, you and I, we are alive and we are kicking. We have not paid any money. It's not by anything that we have done. If money could buy life, there are so many people who will be having life at the exchange of some of us. Amen. But money cannot buy life. God, in his own wisdom, has given it to us free of charge. And there's a need for us now to say thank you to our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Oh, let's respond better. God is good. And all the time. To the shame of the devil and to the glory of God. Amen. Can I give you this little advice? You know, when you wake up in the morning and you look worried, tell yourself this thing. God is good all the time. All the time God is good. That enemy of sorrow will leave you. That enemy of sadness will leave you. Why? In all that you are going through, you know that in everything, God has been so good. I want to know that there are more reasons why you must thank God than the reasons why you must frown against God. Hallelujah. There are more reasons. There are more reasons. The truth is that your condition that you are complaining about now is someone's prayer point. Your condition now is someone's prayer point. God, why me? God, why me? Someone is praying that if I were in that condition, I would thank God every day. Don't allow this your condition that you are going through. It's temporary. Your temporary condition will soon be over. Hallelujah. So don't make a permanent decision based on the temporary condition. Don't allow the devil to give you work that has no pay. Worrying is work without pay. Hallelujah. And it's, so diff it's a very difficult work. Worrying is what? It's work without pay. Worry is like making movements without getting anywhere. Worry is like sitting in the swivel chair. You are going front, back, front, back, front, back, but you are not getting anywhere. Why worry? Jesus Christ said that, why must you worry? Even the best in the air, they don't, they neither farm. They don't do anywhere, but God has been taking care of them every day. This morning, I don't know who I'm giving this word to, but stop worrying. Worry will never add anything to your problem. Worry can, can rather make your problem so big. Worrying is like making a mountain out of a molehill. Hallelujah. Bringing the things that are not there as if they were. Many people have destroyed their own marriages by worrying. Many people have destroyed their own jobs by worrying. If there is nothing you can do about your problem, why worry? If there is something you can do about it, why worry? Hallelujah. Let me say that again. If there is something you can do about your problem, there is something you can do, why worry? If there is nothing you can do about it, why worry? So worrying is absolutely a waste of time. That's why Jesus Christ said, don't worry. Hallelujah. There are two major days that I want to encourage you. Don't worry about them. There are how many days? Two days. Don't worry about them. It is yesterday and tomorrow. I don't know if you can change anything about yesterday. You made a mistake yesterday and so what? What can you change? What can you change? Many of us are beating ourselves because of yesterday's mistakes or yesterday's error. What can you change about it? I'm, I'm not if you can change anything about yesterday. In fact, I'll become and befriend you so that I can change some the same things for me. But you can never change anything about yesterday. The only thing you can do is that you can learn from the lessons of yesterday. But you can never change anything about yesterday. The reason why we learn history is not to change history, but to learn the lessons of history so that the mistakes that were done yesterday will not be repeated today. And the other day you shouldn't worry at all about is tomorrow. The truth is that tomorrow is not promised to anyone. You can't be too sure of tomorrow. That's why when I see people, when I see people grumbling, when I see people running after things, all because of tomorrow, I laugh. And I say, you see, the way you are struggling, assuming tomorrow does not come to meet you. Bible spoke about a man, a rich man. You call him a rich fool, the rich fool. He was a farmer, and he harvested plenty things. And say, ah, this year, the way I've gotten this plenty harvest, my soul, eat and drink. In fact, I'm going to increase my barn. And the Bible says, God came to him and said, you fool. Take all your maize, take your meat, take your yam. This evening, I am taking your soul from you. What are you carrying away? Hallelujah. That's why tomorrow, you must not be worried about. In fact, you don't have control over tomorrow. Jesus Christ said, today's problem is far, far, far bigger 
than for you to go and bring tomorrow's problem and add to it. The reason why many of us are under stress is because we are not just looking at today's problem. We are looking at yesterday's problem and tomorrow's problem. So you are carrying three-day problem at the same time. Many of us are even carrying next year's problem today. You are not wiser than Jesus when he said, when you pray, pray this way. And give us how many days are daily bread? How many days? Who can tell me how many days? How many days? So have you considered it this, this way? Why did he say give us next year our daily bread? So God is telling you that don't worry too much about tomorrow. Worry about today. Give us this day. He said today's problem is just too big. Why must you add tomorrow to it? Give us this day, not tomorrow, this day. And you know what? Tomorrow is in today. I'm not you know that. Tomorrow is in today. However you do today will determine tomorrow. So when you are worried about tomorrow and you are not doing anything about today, you are, you are just wasting your time. The corrections of yesterday is in today. I'm not you know. But when you are worried about yesterday and you are repeating the yesterday's mistake, why are you worrying? <laughs> Hallelujah. So you learn the lessons of yesterday and you correct them today. And the way you want tomorrow to be, you begin to start it today. Can you just imagine you are, you are a young woman, a young man, and you are not going to school, and you are with him. Tomorrow, eh, the way I will, I'll be a big person, eh? tomorrow I'm thinking of, will I ever be a big person? Will something good come out of my life? What are you doing today to get out tomorrow? Worry about tomorrow, not just, oh, eh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm even scared, though. I'm even scared about tomorrow, whether my husband will leave me or not. How are you keeping your marriage today? If you do the things to keep it today, tomorrow may not even come. Hallelujah. I don't know if you know that some people live their lives as if every day is Christmas. I don't know if you know. Don't let anyone deceive you that you cannot live in this life without getting sad. You, there are people who are living, they don't know sadness. There are people on this earth. Why? They don't bring tomorrow's problem to today. You may think, ah, the boy like, don't go born and cry. No, go born and in jail. If today is worrying me, that's okay. But if what is worrying me is tomorrow, there's a problem. So correct today. He said, eh, the way my boss is, my boss may cause them to sack me. The sacking is tomorrow. But what are you doing today to stop it? You know what the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11? Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says, I know the plans I have for you. So who owes your future? Who owes your future? Can you do anything about your future tomorrow? He said, I know the plans. So God knows your tomorrow. As we are all going to our destination now, many of us shall return with different and stature um, all together. In fact, your level will change. Your level may change. Some are retaining with promotion. Some are retaining with business connections. Some are retaining with business ideas. So you have no control over tomorrow. It's about how you manage your own life today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe someone has been blessed by this little exhortation. Now I can go into my major word. Amen why I joined this vehicle. But before then again, let me give somebody to another word. There are two things that will make you to excel in life. That will make your tomorrow beautiful. The two things are one, your performance or your competence and your relationship. Please, no one is an island and no one will tell you, take away your good things from me. In the God we say it this way, Moko eke bwake Hallelujah. Unfortunately, we have been made to, be, to know how to blame people. Either you are blaming the devil, you are blaming the old lady in the house, you are blaming somebody. Everyone is blaming somebody. Doctor say, don't drink wine because of your diabetes. He say, me, I will drink. When your sugar level go high, he say, the witches are attacking you. You see, we have become so irresponsible. But there's something that we must take personal responsibility. Hallelujah. And one of them is that you must build your performance. Build your competence. Build, Bible says, let your works so, light, light so shine before men that they will see your good works. They will see your what? So who, is, who, who, who will do your good works for you? You. So if you are in an office, let your good works show. You cannot be dilly-dallying, becoming lazy and doing erotic where every time your works are in error and you expect your boss to promote you. It doesn't happen that way. I'm not sure you agree with me. No matter how they don't like you, if you are performing, they will recognize you. If you are in a family, with a, if you are married, and you are good to your husband. In fact, when he goes out cry, he will still be comparing. Now this lady cry that I'm chasing, when I compare this lady, this lady to my wife, I think my wife is far better than this lady. My wife is more respectful, my wife is more humble, my wife is so-so and so. Can your husband say that? That's what I'm talking about. 
performance. Hallelujah. When you perform well today, it will reflect tomorrow. But when you become lazy today, it will reflect tomorrow. Hallelujah. Number two thing you must build, I call it relationship currency. Relationship currency. No man is an island. No man is an island. So if you alone, everywhere you think people have a problem with you, you have a bigger, a bigger problem. Because when God wants to bless you, he will not bless you from heaven. He will pass it through a human being. How do you relate to people? How do you relate to people? You alone, every day you have a problem. If you don't have a problem with your boss, you have a problem with your subordinate. If you don't have a problem with your subordinate, you have a problem with your mother-in-law. If you don't have a problem with your mother-in-law, you have a problem with your sister-in-law. You have a problem with everybody. Even your pastor, you have a problem with your pastor. When you go to the choir, you begin to have a problem. You go to usher, you have a problem. <coughs> you have a problem. In fact, it is not the people you are with. Nobody is hurting you. Nobody is offending you. You have a bigger problem. And you don't really understand why you are not getting certain favors. Favors come through human beings. How many of you agree with me? So if you are not relating well with people, how do you get favor? Oh God, give me favor. You can go and buy a gallon full of favor oil. It wouldn't work anything for you. All you need to do is that you need to know how to relate to people very well. You need to relate to people every, very well. If there's any lesson you must learn, learn how to relate with people very, very well. It's a currency in life. And this time and age where we are, please, you must increase your contacts. Small thing, now somebody do know, you say, I'm blocking you. Small thing, no. Let me say this. Those of you are married. Those of you are married and you are in a relationship. Small thing, now I am going. It's a sign of immaturity. It's a sign of immaturity. Oh, Daku. Matoni Bimaya, me, I'm a machine. Me, I'm a machine. It's a sign of immaturity. Because every issue that happens, can be sorted, can, can be solved. I'm not going to do it with me. So the small thing, your husband said it's not me, I'm a machine. You pack your things. No jewelry, and then you throw them away. One day you throw the rings away, it will never come back to you again. Be very mindful. Issues are meant to be solved. Issues are not meant to be destroyed. If you take your issue to a friend, who will tell you, you have to tell it. Tony Binoba, the person doesn't like you. The friends in your life, they all have a part they play in your life. There are some God brought them in your life just to give you certain advice. You know they are one-line advice. And because you have done something wrong and you have said it, you say, I'm cutting you. That advice will never come again. Everyone has a part they play in your life. Can I tell you something? There are many people that you have to cherish them in your life. God brought them into your life for a reason. Tomorrow when you go and meet God, why didn't you give me? He said, I brought you Aquile. Out of Aquile, you could have gotten your husband. But you insulted, you gossip about her and you threw her away. That's why you couldn't marry till you die. Because Aquile is the one that is going to link it to that man. You know, that uh, security man you don't respect is the one who knows the MD, or you don't know. Is the one that can make one statement to the MD, and that is all. He may not be able to employ you, but he knows the one to employ you. Be very careful about how you relate to people. People are very, very necessary. People are very, very necessary. Don't always only be thinking about how you get from people. You build your relationship currency by the investment you make into people. Today, many of us can say, eh, what about your telephone? Every telephone can make a call and can also receive a call, true or false. I have been waiting your call. And since morning you went to work, you didn't call me, you didn't call me. You two, when you call him, what will happen? Relationships are being, are being built. Oh. You don't just sit down for people to just come and like you. If you like me, I will like you. Give, and it shall be given unto you. How many of you know that? So when you give love, you receive love. Bible says, whoever wants to be friend, who wants to be a friend, must first and foremost be friendly. If you are not friendly, you want people to be friendly. You, it can't anything work. I don't know why. I don't know why me. Me, there nobody like me. Nobody like me. Do you like people? When you like them, with time they also like you. I'm not if you understand. Hallelujah. This is a specific word for somebody. I don't know who that person is, but if it is for you, accept it in good faith. God, God has no mind. You think you think God is worried because you are complaining? I won't go to church again. God wants you to do something. If you are not doing it, God has in mind. Whether you come to church, you don't go to church, you pay your tithe, you don't pay your tithe, God is God. In fact, we all came to meet him, we all die and leave him. Yeah, he will forever be there. So I won't go to church again, I won't pay my tithe again, I won't do this again. God has in mind. The suffering, you are the one suffering. So change your ways. Once you change your ways, you will see the hand of God coming to you practically in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now my major word, I've entitled it a gentle reminder. A gentle reminder, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Don't let anyone deceive you. There is life after this life. Hallelujah. 
There is life after this life. There is life after this life. Don't let anyone deceive you. The Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that all these things shall be added unto you. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I want you to know something. If you are in this life all because of what you get in this life, you are so miserable. I'm telling you, you are so what? You are so, so miserable. If you are in this life not to get it, you know, not to get salvation and not to make it to heaven, you are wasting your time. You are worried absolutely for nothing. You are struggling for nothing. All the things you are running after, there are cars who tell you, they say, well, only the other. You are struggling, struggling, struggling. Many of you, because of the little job, the little job you have gotten, you are wasting your soul. You don't even go to church anymore. You can't even pray anymore. You don't even read the Bible anymore. And you can easily give this excuse and say, because, uh, because of the job, because of my husband, the pastor, now you must understand, since I'm married, I've been so busy. Really? So you are exchanging your soul for your marriage. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Have you considered where your soul is going? Don't let anyone deceive you. You know, this thing I'm preaching, I don't know the last time you really heard this in the church. Now the church doesn't preach this. They won't tell you this one again. As if we are all living our life for this earth. Keep this quotation in your mind. When you go, go and read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. He said, If in this life only that we have hope in Christ, then we are of all men most miserable. Let me say that again. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If in this life only that we have hope in Christ, then we are of all men most miserable. Hallelujah. You will die and go. And you can't even take your handkerchief away. Your handkerchief, you can't take it away. Your iPhone 9, iPhone 11, you can't take it away. Your cars, you will leave them behind you. You know, everything we are having in this life is like tenancy agreement. The day you are moving from the house, you can't carry anything away. Hallelujah. If you tenancy cry, is good. You can even carry your bags. But this one, they're like going to be in the hotel. Hallelujah. The way you enter, that's the way you go out. You can't carry anything from the hotel. That's the type of life we are living on this earth. So when I see people doing this at the expense of their souls, I say, you are miserable. I'm not saying don't work. I'm also going to work. I'm not saying don't be responsible. I'm not saying don't create inheritance. But don't let it be at the expense of your soul. Anything that will destroy your soul, please run away from that thing. Because tomorrow by this time, today you see around 45, 18, 55, 70, 75, 83. No matter what, you won't be a stone. Ochomote, amen. Even Methuselah is dead and gone. How much more you and I? In this time and age of fertilizer and uh, 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 GM, genetically modified foods. You know, you hardly get 120 years. Hallelujah. And yet, you are not thinking about where your soul is going to spend eternity. Your soul is going to a place where it will spend life. The truth is that you are going to two places. So you can't mention heaven without mentioning hell. I'm never agree with me. Some pastors refuse to mention hell. And all they are mentioning is heaven, 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 heaven. That's true. That's where we must all go. But if you are not ready for heaven, if you miss heaven, you can never miss hell. I'm never agree with me. If you miss heaven, you cannot miss hell. There is no middle point. I nearly got to heaven. You are in hell. I nearly got to heaven. You are in hell straight away. And I nearly got to, went to hell. It means you are in heaven. Like examination, you either pass or you fail. 50% you pass, 49% you fail. A thin line. And that's why you must not take this for granted. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says, It is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, judgment. Hallelujah. If there's anything you must worry about, Bible says in Matthew 6.33, it said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye what? First the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen.
Seek ye first. Mate, come on, come on, come on. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You can and so be normal. If all you are seeking for in this life is what you eat and what you drink, brothers and sisters, can I ask you something? How much do you eat per day? Any crack matters and you are in the day. Hallelujah. Then you take it at your expense. There are people who have killed human beings to make some money. Today, they have parked their cars in their garages. Hallelujah. There are people who have killed to make some money. And they have parked their, those cars that they use the money to buy in garages. And for years, they have registered 16. But they can tell you this one, I only started like twice. What is the essence of that? If God should bless you, you get private jet. Hallelujah. But don't do it by selling your soul to the devil. God bless you. If God has blessed you, that's okay. But don't do it at the expense of your soul. Tomorrow by this time, you are gone. Oh. Tomorrow by this time, you know, in 2012, I lost my daddy. And when we were about to share the inheritance, the money that was in the bank, we went for all the money the same day. And the family members sat down and they shared the money. When they shared the money, my money that I got, it finished before 6 p.m. that same day. 6 p.m., the same day, the money got finished. I, I just bought, only bought one gadget. That's the receiving spot and I've thrown it away. So you see, the struggle is struggle. If you have done it at, the, at your expense, look at what has been done. Solomon said, all this labor that I'm going through, do I even know that the one who is coming to inherit me, will he be a fool or a wise person? There are many people who have left companies to their children, and because their children, children are fools, their companies have rotten away. All your struggles and your uh, labor has been in vain. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, this morning, all that I'm here to tell you is to remind you of this simple thing, that don't let anyone deceive you. Today, you can do pam pam. Oh, there is no place, there is no place. When you are so close, when you are so close to your grave, you understand. Thank God I know that a few people, when they are about to die, they know where you are going already. Two days to three days, they know. I remember when my mother, when dad was about to die, two days before time, or three days before time, he said, he, she was sitting down like this, and said, hey, no one can't let me, yo. If I couldn't see anybody that going to die. But I remember what he said, no one can't let me, yo. I never understood. He was seeing something nobody understood. He has never called me, though I'm a pastor, to come and pray for him. I've been praying for him, but that day he said, wherever I come and pray for me right now. He saw something I wasn't seeing. When you go to the hospital or somebody who's about to die, you can see the way they are turning their head and they begin to say certain statements. Hey, no, when they are saying those things, can't you think that they are telling you there's something that they are seeing that you are not seeing? Don't let anyone deceive you. I've always said this simple thing. That please, even if you don't believe that there is heaven or there is hell, live your life as if you believe. Live your life as if you do what? You believe. What you are doing is that you are, you are taking lotto. You are doing cha-cha. If you don't know and the normal should try, <laughs> that will be your end. So if I were you, I will bounce my hope on it. One wise man said, he said, I mean, I will not argue whether there is heaven or hell, but I will live my life as if there is heaven. Let me die and go and see that there is no heaven. It's better that way. This morning, I don't know who is the main reason why God has given me this simple word to come and give to somebody to remind you that there is a place we are going. Jesus Christ said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Where are you going? Where is your soul going? It's appointed unto man who wants to die. And after that judgment, what account will you give? If Jesus should meet you today, what account will you give? I am here to inform you that please repent. Repent. You cannot do gambling or cha-cha with your life. 
tomorrow is not promised to anyone. If there's a time you can repent, it is today. All those doing the argument, go and read about the one who did the Apple phone. Uh, what's the name? Steve Jobs. When he was about to die, he made certain profound statements about eternity. He was not a Christian. He was almost like an atheist. But he made certain profound statements about eternity. Please, don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let anyone deceive you. If you're a Christian, please hold on to your conviction. Read the Bible and know it for yourself. There is life after this life. I pray that you will die in joy. And always know that you have a place where you are going. It is when Christ is in you that you have the hope of eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you need everlasting life, you need only one man. And that man is called what? Jesus. If there is no Jesus in your life, you have no eternal life. You can argue and argue and argue, but on that day, he will be judging you. The man came the first time as a savior. He is coming back again as a judge. When he comes and he sits on his judgment throne, what answer will you give him? I pray that you can boldly stand before there and he can call you by your name. Say, hey, that's my boy. Come on, let's go to the right hand side. I pray that Jesus will not say, get out of me. I know you not, you doers of iniquity. This morning, if you have received the word of God and you are convicted, I want to bow down your head with me and say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as I am. I know I'm a sinner. I know I cannot help myself. Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. And I believe you died because of me. Today, I accept you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart to stay and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for adding me to your family. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. God bless you so much for your audience. I believe that this word will generate, will germinate, and will be fruitful in your life. Amen. God bless you so much. My name is Reverend Albert Ajite, and I'm the senior pastor of Divine Wisdom Ministries International. We are located at Teshi Camp 2, around the taxi rank, very close to ICGC Faith and Miracle Temple. Very close, you know, the way you get the taxi rank around the transformer, you just take your right hand and ask for divine wisdom, you get there. Amen. My numbers are at the back of the first given to you. You can call me anytime, any day. If you need direction, you need um, uh, advice, you need counseling, you need the word of God, call me anytime, any day, and I will take to you as the Lord directs. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye bye. Thank God.